Good evening everyone and a very warm welcome to quarter 3 FY19 earning call of Make Money Organics Limited. We are pleased to announce that the company has reported a strong performance in terms of revenue and profitability in Q3. Talking briefly about our Q3 results, consolidated revenue of the quarter grew by 23% to Rs. 552 crore on the back of strong performance in export as well as domestic markets. Export sales increased by 26% while the domestic market sale increased by 16%. EBITDA for the quarter increased by 24% to Rs. 145 crore from 173 crore in Q3 FY18. With a slight improvement in the margin by about 23 basis point. Interest expense for the quarter declined by 24%, mainly on the account of mark-to-market -market gain on short-term foreign currency borrowings. Pet for the quarter increased by 27% to 79 crore, and pet after minority incre uh, interest increased by 52% to rupees 66 crore. Looking at our segment performance, our pigment business delivered a revenue growth of 5%, to rupees 160 crore. This was mainly on account of higher realization. Sales volume for the quarter stood at 3730 metric ton. EBITDA increased by 7% to rupees 22 crore with margin of 13.8%. Utilization level for the quarter stood at 81% compared to 77% in Q3 FY18. Agrochemical business delivered a revenue growth of 33% to Rs. 205 crore. This was mainly driven by strong performance in export market. Export sales for the quarter increased by 55% to Rs. 161 crore. It has contributed 82% of the sales compared to 69% of the sales in Q3 FY18. EBITDA for the quarter stood uh, uh, quarter uh, increased by 55 percent to rupees 44 crore and EBITDA margin improved by 300 basis point to 21.3 percent. This was mainly on account of better product mix and higher realization. Utilization for the quarter stood at 67 percent compared to 58 percent in Q3 FY18. Basic chemical revenue grew by 27 percent to rupees 193 crore. This was on the account of volume growth as well as higher realization. Sales volume for the quarter increased by 12% to 42,554 metric tons. Utilization for the quarter stood at 93% compared to 83% in Q3 FY19. Higher utilization leads to better economics of scale, which further leads improvement in operating margins. EBITDA for the quarter grew by 33% to Rs. 91 crore with a margin of 47%. Going forward, we believe that all our businesses, pigments, agrochemicals and basic chemicals are on the strong growth path with increased demand in domestic and on the export front. Thus, along with higher utilization and increased share of value-added products will drive profitable growth as we move ahead. With this, we would be happy to take any question that you may have. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, we will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may please press star, then one on your telephone keypad and wait for your turn to ask the questions. If you would like to withdraw your request, you may do so by pressing star, then two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Also as a reminder, in order to ensure that the management is able to address questions from all participants in this conference call, please limit your questions to two per participant. If you have any further questions, you may come back for a follow-up. The first question is from the line of Ankit Gupta from Bamboo Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, thanks for the opportunity. So, I just wanted to uh, get a sense on the agrochemical business. We've seen a slight decline in volumes, and despite of that, uh, you know our, our uh, top line has grown quite a bit, and our margins have improved a lot. So, can you tell us, you know, is it on account of high? Uh, what is the reason for you know uh, increase in realization and uh, improvement in margin? 
thank you ankit the matter of the fact is as you know we are in the business of agrochemical where we make intermediates technical and formulation all put together and in this particular quarter our formulation sale is not uh, that big it has gone down in fact normally formulation volume is higher than the technical volume because it gets diluted so because of that factor keeping in mind the volume has gone down but overall technical volume has gone up and uh, the reason why the technical has increased and not formulation has increased because particularly looking at the market condition there is a better realization in technical compared to formulation so our sales and re, uh, keeping a realization and sales in mind we have sold more of a technical than the formulation okay 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 and uh, you know uh, how the trend for the technical prices you know we have been hearing that uh, in january in february they had been some you know uh, the, the prices have come up a bit so what is your view on that uh, uh the prices now it has become relatively stable there is not much increase coming any further but it is not going down as well the product which we make in the those products we have not seen any downward trend so far okay. and we feel that even in coming quarters also it will be steadily in this range only we okay. don't see any fall in the selling price can you disclose this will be a key product for which uh, key areas in technicals we address yes uh, so as you know we are more of a technical oriented company we have got a insecticide range which is mainly focusing on the pyrethroid range which is cypermethrin permethrin and uh, bifenthrin and all and in herbicide range which is a phenoxy herbicide we have a major volume called 24d based herbicide okay. so in pyrethroid range product we there are about four or five producers in india where india has got upper hand compared to china we don't see any challenge or competition for this range of product from china okay and uh, for 24d which is a phenoxy herbicide china is equally strong as india but uh, with our kind of the backward integration what we have that gives us upper edge compared to china and that that is helping us okay okay and just uh, on intermediate sourcing also you know we have been uh, you know a lot of companies have been uh, telling us that there are uh, issues in terms of procuring raw materials and intermediate from from china for manufacturing technicals as well so if you can you know throw some light how how much backward integrated we are in this product and how is the supply situation for uh, key raw materials and intermediate sure you are absolutely correct uh, the companies which are not fully backward integrated they need to be dependent on china or some other manufacturer for the intermediate sourcing in the case of make money for majority of our product where we have a focus and volume we are fully backward integrated so we are not dependent on any other company or not in, not even on china so that gives us upper edge over other companies okay 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 and sir a uh, last question uh, on uh, you know on customer side you know uh, with this china issue happening for almost 2 3 years now uh, have we entered into you know long term uh, supply agreements with any of our customers if yes how much will that be contributing to our uh, agrochemical sales overall or technical sales overall uh as a make money we already have one or two customer with whom we have been working since many years mm -hmm. and we have a kind of a long term relationship and agreement mm -hmm. after china uh, factor since last about one and a half to two years time mm -hmm. lot of companies are looking at indian partner and indian stock technical manufacturer so we are in touch with few companies as well for the new product or increase the sourcing from our company and from indian market so in future if anything uh, is there then we will definitely announce for the in interest of the investment investors so 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 just one last more question for mine uh, how are the gross margins in agrochemical business like we have you know 18 20% ebitda margin but how are the gross margins in agrochemical business uh the gross margin is uh, good as well because you okay. have seen that you know last Q3 FY18 our EBITDA margin was in the range of about 18% 18% yeah which has increased to 21% in this quarter and overall for 9 uh, months also we are in the range of more than 20% for agrochemical and we hope it will be maintained 
So gross margin is more approximately in the range of about 40-42 percent. Okay, 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 sir. Thank you. Thank, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Debanjana Chatterjee from HDFC Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah. Good evening, everybody. Uh, thanks for taking my question. Uh, just wanted to know the net and gross debt level on both consolidated and standalone levels. Sure. Yeah, as on, uh, as far debt is concerned, on uh, consolidated basis, we have long-term debt of 400 crore as on 31st December. Mm -hmm. And on standalone basis, an MOL, it is 259 crore. Okay. And uh, I have one, noticed one more thing. Your uh, other expenses have shot up in your standalone numbers by 25% YOY. So any, uh, which is uh, like pressurizing the sequential growth quarter to quarter. So any particular reason for that? Uh, actually, other expenses, if you see, <coughs> during the quarter, uh, due to uh, rupee appreciation, which okay. uh, uh, appreciated from 72 to 69 rupees okay. uh, at the December end. So there is a mark-to-mark -mark loss of around 10 crore. Okay. So, which uh, as a as per accounting standards, so this has been uh, instead of showing uh, other income, uh, uh, other income as a negative, so it has been added into other expenses. Okay. Okay. On the other side, if you see correspondingly, there is a gain into uh, MTM gain on the foreign currency borrowings. Okay. So, which is five crore. To that extent, our interest <coughs> cost is lower. So if you see, interest cost is seven crore as compared to sixteen crore last quarter. So in the last quarter, there is an MTM loss of 4 crore and there is a gain in this quarter of 5 crore. Okay. So, so that it has is been complicated in finance cost. The gain has been shown in your interest expense. Yes. Okay. And uh, one more thing is, uh, your others is uh, according to your segmental uh, breakup, pigment, agrochemicals, basic and others, what is this others dealing in? Other is unallocated is the one is the from the trading. There is a small, uh, you can say, uh, other incomes. This is unallocated portion from the corporate side also. Okay. And uh, uh, on the console basis, others is partly on your, uh, you can say, foreign subsidies also. Okay, okay. That's all for mine. Thank you so much. Thank you. A reminder to the participants to please limit your questions to two per participant. If you have any further questions, you may come back for a follow-up. The next question is from the line of Jigar Shah from Nijan Capital. Please go ahead. Hi, sir. Good evening. Um, Good evening. I have only one question. Uh, in the worst case, in your basic chemical business, uh, for FY20 and for FY21, what would be the worst case margin in this? Uh, 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 it's too uh, difficult to forecast that far fetch, but usually uh, by thumb rule, we believe that EBITDA should remain in the range of 30 to 35 percent. Okay, there is no there is no danger that EBITDA margin could fall to 15 percent or something like that if something bad happens somewhere in the world. No, no, no. no. These are high capex oriented business where sales to turnover ratio, uh, sales to investment ratio is lower side. And uh, normally the EBITDA margin remains in the range of about 30 to 35 percent. But uh, because of the good uh, cycle of the business, uh, since last about two years, we are getting more than 40 percent margin. Right. Okay. That helps a lot. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The next okay. question is from the line of Shorin Parekh from JMP Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah. Good evening, everyone. Uh, just one, just two, two questions. One is, uh, sir, uh, can you uh, tell me the ECU for uh, for the uh, for the third quarter for uh, basic chemical? ECU is uh, 40, uh, 41,500 for the third quarter. Okay, and also just if you can just uh, throw some light on uh, the sustainability of the basic chemical margin, and also if uh, you can uh, talk uh, something about the pigment. Whether you know we've been able to pass on the raw material cost because uh, I guess that pigment has been a bit uh, there has been some slowdown in the margins also. See, as far as the ECU is concerned, uh, from from the beginning of the financial year, we have mentioned that issue should remain in the range of forty thousand, and we believe that it will also remain in the same range for the remaining quarter, and uh, the pigment 
and for the pigment as of now uh, we are not able to uh, increase the pass on to the customer because of the market is on decline mode from last 3 to 4 months right right sir so so what would be your outlook for maybe if if not if if for the next quarter and for fi20 as well it will be remain the same between 14 to 16 percent okay 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 fine uh, thank you and all the best Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Rohit Nagraj from Sunidhi Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah, uh, thanks for taking the question and uh, congratulations. Uh, so, uh, can you just uh, give us the current status of Loromethane's project? Uh, I believe uh, it was supposed to be commissioned uh, by the end of uh, Q3 or beginning of Q4. And uh, where are we uh, currently? as yes, chloromethane uh, project should commission by end of march or beginning of first week of april uh, then some minor delay has happened during the commissioning activity that is the reason instead of january it's been pushed back to end of march okay and so the full effect uh, would be felt only in uh, fi21 next year yes, we'll be FI having uh, probably for three quarters uh, you know, proportionate uh, volumes and revenues from the project right It will take three, three months to stabilize the project. Yeah, so once it settled down in the first quarter, then immediately uh, remaining nine months, uh, we should able to get the full capacity utilization. Right, and uh, so on the uh, chlorine prices front, uh, we have seen that uh, the chlorine prices have been uh, pretty strong over the last uh, one and a half years. Uh, what is your sense in terms of the downstream demand for chlorine, and uh, how do we expect the prices to behave? Because it was predominantly from the uh, chlorine derivatives perspective that uh, the demand was uh, pretty strong see what happens that uh, uh, chloralkyl units are a continuous plant so when somebody comes with a newer capacity you know there is always some surplus happens in the market and the consumption industry are a batch processing industry so they take some time to match up with that uh, utilization or consumption pattern so that was what happened that uh, Two years back, there was some surplus in the chlorine, and that's the reason the chlorine prices were negative. But throughout this year, the demand and supply gap is minimal, and that is the reason chlorine has a strong demand. Uh, and we also foresee that this trend will remain continue uh, in the next financial year also. All right, sir. And if I can squeeze one last question, uh, what is the uh, profitability of Meghmani Organics uh, during the quarter and for the first nine months? profitability in terms of absolute absolute number uh yes if you could uh, share that number yeah. on stand alone basis uh, for make money organic the basic chemicals uh, business so on nine months basis the profitability uh, ebitda margin Uh, sorry, sir. Make money fine, Kim. Um, my apologies. Yeah, that's what make I money think fine. We already announced, so you I want to know about make money fine, Kim? Just a minute. Yeah, apologies. Yep. What do you want to know exactly? Profitability for the nine months. For for the nine months, you want to know? Yes. Yes, sir. Uh. In terms of uh, value, it's around 216 crores. Uh, sorry, that's the profit before exceptional items. The so PBT is around 183 crores. Okay, PBT is 183. Okay, oh, yeah, PBT is 183 crores. Yes. Okay, so and tax rate would be about 30 percent. So approximately 120 crores of uh, profit. We fall under MAT at, at this moment. Okay. That will be approximately. Okay, so. So tax rate would be around twenty percent plus minus. Yeah, twenty two percent. Twenty two percent. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Kishan Shah from Isha Securities. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, sir. Thank you for taking my question. Um, I just wanted to know what kind of delay did you face in this CMS project? Uh, I'm sorry. What kind of delay? In the CMS project. Oh. See, uh, we we uh, received some machinery is a little bit uh, delayed, which was imported, and then due to that some synchronization activity at commission has got delayed. That's that's the primary reason for the delay of this project. 
Okay. And uh, so what kind of uh, incremental revenue do you see from this project once it is commissioned in FI20? Looking at the current pricing trend, we believe that it should be in the range of 150 to 160 crores. Okay. Um, so what is the current price right now? It's varying. Uh, it, it's, uh, chloromethans have three products, MDC, chloroform and carbon tetrachloride. And it's varying between uh, 40 to 60 rupees. It depends on the methanol and chlorine pricing and the market scenario. Okay. And sir, uh, there is this uh, new caustic show, uh, potash capacity that is expected to come. That is, I think, 60 tons per day. So, uh, by when would that be commissioned? That was commissioned way back in April 2016. Three years back. Uh, uh, so, sorry, not, not potash. Uh, I'm sorry, my bad. This caustic soda plant, that is, the uh, capacity is expected to increase to 2,71,600. Yeah, so the additional caustic capacity will st uh, will come online uh, somewhere on the uh, second quarter of next financial year. Okay, and uh, the revenues that you expect from that, uh, incremental revenues? It will be approximately 300 crores at current ECU level. Okay. Okay, so fine, I get back in the queue if I have any other questions. Sure. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Deepak Poddar from Sapphire Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, uh, thank you very much, sir, for the opportunity. So just wanted to understand, have you shared any kind of guidance for next year in terms of uh, revenue growth and margins? Uh, so far, we have not shared with anybody. That we will be sharing in the next uh, full year uh, con call, full year result con call. What is our budget for the next year? Right now it is under preparation, so in the next uh, quarter result we will be declaring that. Understood, sure. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Debanjana Chatterjee from HDFC Securities. Please yeah, uh, yeah, just one more follow-up question. Uh, there was a fire broke out in your DH plant. So has that come on stream again or is there any further delay or what is the development over there? Fire broke out when it was, I think, way back in 2017. Okay. Oh, okay. So, what was the top line contribution from that plant? So that it was immediately started within three months. So there was no loss from the revenue. So it was started within three months itself. So it is running well. Okay. There is no issue. So can it was you give me revenue contribution from from that plant? Roughly around 190 crore for the full year. For full year, right? Yeah. 190, 190, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Mehul Shah from Sambhavna Securities. Please go ahead. Hello. Good evening. Yes. Uh, sir, just wanted to know the, uh, you know, com uh, you have a 6.4 billion capex, right? Just wanted to uh, know some highlights about how it is progressing. Exactly. Uh, what's the progress you want to know? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, so we have planned for four projects. First is the chloromethane, which is going to commission by end of this financial year or beginning of uh, first week of April. And then the remaining uh, two are hydrogen peroxide and the caustic soda expansion. And to support that, we are also putting our own captive power plant, additional 36 megawatt coal base. And all three will come in line uh, somewhere in the quarter two of next financial year. And incremental revenue from this project, sir? Some revenue, uh, we assume that if current price trend remains, it will be additional 600 to 700 crores will add. Okay, okay, okay. And uh, I have one more question related to our NCLT application. Is there any progress right now or it's still pending? I mean, I mean, it's, uh, it is at what stage, if you can throw some light on that also. We are still awaiting the final order. But everything is prepared from our side, right? We are just waiting from the NCLT side, uh, the response. Yes. Yeah, when, uh, we are awaiting yes. the order from that's correct. NCLT. Okay, okay. Thank you. All the best for the future. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Rahul Marathe from Akash Ganga Investments. Please go ahead. Hello. Uh, sir, uh, this is uh, regarding to the new structure that uh, we would be having post the NCLT. So, uh, you shared the number of uh, make money fine game uh, that it has a PBT of 183 crores. So, if you could just share uh, how much of the PBT uh, will be apportioned in the new structure. 
Can you reflect your question? So, uh, in the old structure, Megmani Organic owns uh, around 82% in Megmani Fine Game. That is my understanding. Is it right? No. 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 Uh, in the current consolidation, it is 77%. Okay. okay. Uh, and uh, post, it is going to be 57. 57. So, around 20% uh, fall would be considered in this PBT going forward? No, not in this PBT. Uh, yes, from the next, uh, next year onwards. After order is approved by NCLT, okay. then only uh, financial will be from the subsequent basis, not the retrospective. Yes, uh, from the sub uh, subsequent year onwards. And uh, uh, that 8% will also be then uh, compensating somewhat of the fall, 8% uh, preference shares that we are having. No, actually uh, there will be two lakhs of the payments. One is 221 crore, yes. uh, which will be paid immediately after NCLT orders and along with 8% dividend. Okay. And we are expecting in, uh, I think, one month, jo hai, this should be finalized and before March we should get that payment. Okay. Second is the 211 crore, which is the additional payment, mm. which is uh, again uh, with 8% dividend. Mm. And uh, these are the OC RPS, which will be redeemed over a period. Okay. And uh, till the time this is paid, so 8% dividend will be paid by MFL to MOL. On this 211 crores? 211 crores. Okay, okay, yes. Yeah. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Rohit Nagaraj from Sunidhi Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah, uh, thanks for taking my question. Uh, sir, could you throw some more light on the pigments of business as to how the raw material prices are currently, uh, I guess the uh, thalic anhydride prices have been softened? And uh, what is the scenario which we are looking uh, over the next uh, few couple of quarters? And uh, the average prices of uh, the three uh, pigments, green, PTC blue, and uh, beta blue, during the quarter? Yeah, uh, average price of the CPC is around uh, 245 to 250 rupees, about <coughs> 335 to 340 rupees, and green 7 is around 425 to 430 rupees. And about the raw material increase, uh, in as compared to the last year in Thalic anhydride, 15% increase. Cuprus mm -hmm. increased by 15% also, and urea is increased by 24%. Okay. All right. And uh, how are those uh, prices? Uh, for the next quarter, the forecast will be remain same. There is not much any increase. Uh, so sequentially, uh, the pigment prices have slightly come down because uh, I think uh, last quarter the uh, green prices were about 450, uh, blue were about 280, and uh, beta was about uh, 350 to 400. Yes, because the uh, third quarter is uh, on decline mode as compared to the quarter two due to uh, export. Oh. Okay. And uh, these exports are predominantly which uh, geography? Uh, is it uh, because of China or any other uh, specific country? No, no. Actually, in Hello Sinan, we don't find any competition with okay. the China. It is purely Indian-dominated uh, business. And as far as the export is concerned, we export to approximately 80 yeah. countries. So it is widely uh, spread to different continents. So it is not that we are just dependent on one segment or one area. And yes, you are correct, there has been increase in the raw material price, but due to the market condition, there is not much demand coming from the different market. And because of that, there is a pressure on the selling price. So there is a two-way pressure. One side, there is an increase in the raw material price, as well as there is a decrease in the selling price. And uh, in some of the countries, uh, like Turkey, Argentina, Iran. different market, Iran and all, uh, there has been currency-related issues as well where uh, because of heavy depreciation in different market local because of their local currency the demand is not picking up well which we feel that in the coming quarters uh, there will be increase in the demand and the then we will be able to pass on the price increase to our customer so there will be improvement in the margin in coming quarters and uh, we hope that uh, it we uh, uh, Current EBITDA margin is in the range of about 14%. We hope that it should improve to about 16%. 16%. Correct. 
Okay. So, and uh, one clarification on the basic chemicals project. Uh, you said the total revenue potential is 600 crores, and of that, uh, caustic potential is 300 crores. Is it the uh, right interpretation? That's correct. That's okay. correct, yeah. So hydrogen peroxide will be uh, the rest uh, 300 crores. Uh, is that uh, uh, chloromethane 150, hydrogen peroxide 150. Oh, thank you, thank you so much. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Mihir Thakkar from Prithvi Finmart. Please go ahead. Uh, sir, my all questions are answered. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Kishan Shah from Isha Securities. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, sir. Thank you for taking my follow-up question. Uh, so, sir, you said that in agrochemicals, uh, the margins were better because of uh, better realization and uh, good exports and a better product mix. So, uh, if, uh, if I just like to confirm that our sales in the quarter was 4149 metric ton. Yes. And uh, our uh, revenue was 205.3 crores. That's correct. So, uh, if I calculate like quarter on quarter, our uh, realization has actually gone down by 7%. Um, am I right? Oh, no. If you compare yeah. last Q3, the, the sales was 4,246 tons. And the revenue generated out of that much tonnage was approximately 155 crore. With the okay. slight decrease by about about 100 tons uh, compared to Q3 FY18, <coughs> but there is an increase of sales by 50 crore to 205 crore. So if you take yeah. per, per ton or per kilo realization, then it has increased a lot. Uh, uh, I got your point, but uh, I'm comparing actually quarter two FY19 versus quarter three. Okay, if you compare quarter two FY19 versus yes, then yes, there is slightly decrease in realization because uh, in okay. some of the raw material there was a price increase which we were not able to pass on immediately to our customer, and we will be able to uh, pass on that in the next coming quarters. Okay, so, uh, so uh, if you could just tell me, uh, like, uh, how many times, how many price increase have you taken this in the nine month period till now? Or maybe you could just tell a percentage, like we have increased the prices by 18% or something like that. Uh, it would be difficult to give you the answer because it depends on product to product, but overall on the basis if we considered, then yes, there has been drastic increase by more than more than 25 to 30 percent. Okay, okay. And, uh, okay. And sir, are you looking to increase the prices any further? Looking at the current market situation, we feel that, you know, it won't be possible to increase the price further. But uh, we will be able to maintain this price range. And we would like to improve our margin by reducing our input cost and by optimizing our operational cost. So that our target is to maintain this kind of EBITDA or further increase our EBITDA by doing this kind of activity. Okay, okay. And so uh, one more question. Uh, uh, what is your uh, effective tax rate that we could be considering for FI19 and FI20? In the range of 27 to 30 percent. 27 to 50, okay. And there are nine months interest cost was around 38 crores. So, uh, is there any scope for this to go down any further? Or uh, could you give a guidance for FI20? Like, how much would it be? Actually, we are uh, trying to maintain our interest cost uh, by various means, uh, uh, by way of mix, debt mix which we take in foreign currency also, because we are export oriented. So, to that extent, we are able to maintain our interest cost in uh, below 8%. Despite there being increase in MCLR. See, you, you can okay. see that there has been drastic increase in MCLR by all the banks in last six months' time. But still, we have been able to maintain our uh, interest cost, finance cost below 8%. By doing various kind of things, by taking debt into okay. foreign currencies and all, we have been able to maintain it below 8%. And we feel that even in the future for FY 1920 also, we'll be able to maintain it. Um, okay, sir. Okay, so that's it from my side. Thank you and all the best. Thank you. Thank you.
The next question is from the line of Ravinder Bats from an individual investor. Please go ahead. Hello. 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 Hello, sir. Yes. Ah, uh, sir, my question is related to financial statements. Sir, related. Hai. Hello. Yes, we can hear you. Ah, uh, sir. तो मेरा जो सवाल है वो फाइनेंशियल स्टेटमेंट से संबंधित है एक्चुअली जो इंडिया के अकॉर्डिंगली हमारी जो अकाउंटिंग होनी चाहिए वो डायलूटेड ईपीएस के लिए हेलो यस उसको आपने जो अगर हम मर्जर के बाद की बात करें तो जो 20 परसेंट डिक्लाइन होगा होल्डिंग के अंदर तो उससे जो नेट कंट्रोलिंग इंटरेस्ट जो है एनसीआई के अंदर जो चेंज आ रहा है उसको लिए डायलूटेड ईपीएस में आपने उसको कंसिडर किया है या नहीं किया है जो ट्वेंटी डिक्लाइन होगा जो कि पॉसिबल है तो इंडेक्स थर्टी थ्री कह रहा है कि उसको आप कम से कम आप प्रेजेंट करिए उसको फाइनेंशियल स्टेटमेंट में उसके अकॉर्डिंगली किया है या आपने जो इंडेक्स ट्वेंटी के अकॉर्डिंगली सॉरी एस ट्वेंटी के अकॉर्डिंगली जो ईपीएस है उसी के अकॉर्डिंगली कैलकुलेट हुआ है डायलूटेड ईपीएस के बारे में मेरा सवाल था और मेरा दूसरा क्वेश्चन ये है कि क्या कंपनी का कोई ऐसा प्लान है कि जो सब्सिडरी है उसके अंदर कोई डीमर्जर की कोई प्रोसेस होकर उसकी कोई लिस्टिंग की पॉसिबिलिटी हम देख सकते हैं फ्यूचर के अंदर मैं स्पेशली मेक मनी फाइन कैम से रिलेटेड सवाल पूछ रहा to answer your second question because as of now you know that we are in capex mode and uh, we are going to start some of our new projects in coming years time so we don't have a immediate plan our first plan is to stabilize this capex and uh, run our plant at good capacity we have been getting different kind of uh, 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 proposals from different people but i think this is not the right time to do it but in future we'll look at the possibility and for your first question uh, mr chahal our cfo will answer to you sir yeah, mr gurinder we have not uh, given any impact because it is uh, uh, subject to nclt approval so once nclt approval is in place so then only we'll give effect to that acha sir mera ek sawal aur tha aapse hello kujin sir aap hello yeah yeah we can hear you सर ऐसा हो सकता है कि आगे चल के कि देखिए कि जो फाइन कैम है उसमें अगर हम डेप्थ को बढ़ाते हैं तो ऐसी कोई पॉसिबिलिटी देखते हैं कि हम जो एग्जिस्टिंग शेयर होल्डर्स हैं वो कुछ कंट्रीब्यूट करें और राइट इश्यू के थ्रू आप उनसे पैसे इकट्ठा करें जिससे कि वो जो डेप्थ इक्विटी है वो काफी मैनेजेबल हो जाए ऐसी कोई पॉसिबिलिटी है मैनेजमेंट की तरफ से कि राइट इशू के थ्रू कुछ पैसा रेज किया जाए जिससे कि हमारा जो डेप्थ की पोजिशन है वो थोड़ी कम और जो हम लोग जो इक्विटी है क्योंकि जो शेयर होल्डर्स है वो काफी कमिटेड है कि भाई आपको राइट के इशू के थ्रू पैसा इकट्ठा हो जाए और कंपनी की जो वैल्यूशन है वो भी अभी नीचे है जैसा आप जानते हैं तो एक अच्छी अपॉर्चुनिटी हो सकती है कि फंड डेल्थ से रेज करने की बजाय शेयर से रेज किया जाए एग्जिस्टिंग शेयर होल्डर से थैंक यू फॉर योर सजेशन मिस्टर रविंदर आई थिंक विल डिस्कस इंटरनली विल टेक सम एडवाइज एंड विल रिव्यू वॉट एवर द बेस्ट ऑप्शन इज फॉर इन द इंटरेस्ट ऑफ द कंपनी थैंक यू थैंक यू थैंक यू थैंक यू The next question is from the line of Satish Jay Kumar from Satish Investments. Please go ahead. Hello, sir. Can you hear me? Yes. Uh, sir, uh, I am a retail investor. So, so why the dividend yield is very low? Like uh, last year, it was six percent. Going forward, how how it will be? Uh. see uh, we came, came to know from our investors that uh, dividend payout is on a little bit on lower side so i think uh, we will discuss internally in the book and for the ne- for the q4 result we'll be announcing that it would be in what kind of range okay so because of uh, going for ongoing capacity expansions you are not able to pay high dividends if so uh that is one of the reason but uh, not exactly we will see a good dividend so don't worry okay okay sir thank you all the best thank you the next question is from the line of rohit nagraj from sunidhi securities please go ahead uh, so just couple of questions on the financial front uh, you said consolidated debt uh, right now is 400 crores and uh, during the last con call i think the number was uh, 637 crores so have we repaid uh, almost 237 crores of debt no rohit uh, we have mentioned the long term debt only and uh, 200 crore is the working capital okay so the total debt would be close to about 600 crores actually as was in the last quarter it is uh, 625 okay okay thanks thanks for the clarification sir and uh, what is the capex uh, that we have uh, incurred or uh, till 9 months for the new projects you mean to say 
uh, the entire capex uh, for the uh, maintenance capex including and uh, for the new project. So for the 640 crore capex, we already done the uh, payment of 350 crores. Okay. The remaining will be done in next uh, two to four months in a staggered manner, as a man it's getting due. Okay. And uh, normal maintenance capex? Maintenance uh, is ongoing. Uh, about 30 to 35 crore is the normal capex. What we do it uh, in the routine process. Uh, that's a yearly number, correct? Yeah, that's a yearly number. Yeah, and uh, just one update on the uh, capex on the pigments and agrochem. Uh, this is uh, subject to the EC, so uh, we are expected to uh, receive some kind of feedback probably this quarter or next quarter for the EC, right? Uh, you are correct. Uh, we will be able to give some good news about environment clearance for the agrochemical division and pigment division. I think in the next quarter con call. Uh, we are at the last stage of getting environment clearance, and at the same time, we have already started our internal work. So, for the agrochemical project, also, we'll be announcing in the next quarter con call. Thank you, Lord, sir. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Ambud Chaudhary, an individual investor. Please go ahead. Hello. Yes. Congratulations, sir, for a great quarter. Given the global slowdown in various segments, uh, my you. question. Uh, my question basically is, uh, what is the main reason behind the slowdown in the pigment sector? Like, uh, the demand growth is not that much slowing down due to the few countries like Argentina or uh, Turkey. So, what would be the main reason behind? This? The main reason is uh, uh, one reason is the currency. The second reason, uh, the consumption of the pigment is on decline mode due to uh, the printing in market is on decline mode. Because of the the technology. See, Mr. Okay. Chaudhary, application point of view, uh, pigment goes into three segment. One, the major segment is a printing ink. Second is a master batch for the plastics, and third is for the paints. Globally, you have seen that now the digital media is taking uh, lead, and the printing media is getting staggered or slowly growing going down. So, because of that reason, you know, we see that you know there is bit pressure on the pigment market but at the same time the big the, the plastic, plastic market master batch and, and the coating industry is on uh, growing side growing side so we hope that with that we will be able to uh, match the demand and uh, in future though there will be good days as well for the pigment division uh, how much do you think the time will take for this slowdown to get covered up uh, minimum uh, one quarter so we hope that FY 1920 will be better. The line for the current participant has dropped. We take the next question from the line of Suresh Agarwal, an individual. <coughs> Please go ahead. Good evening, sir. Good evening. Uh, your employee cost has increased from 20.9 crore to 33.1 crore in this quarter. And in the uh, nine month ending, also from 59 crore to 92 crore round. What's the reason behind this? See, one of the reason is we are in the growing board for the different projects. So we need to recruit new people. So that is one of the reason. And the second reason we used to do the managerial remuneration in the last quarter for the whole year. So which, uh, as per the board advice, we have done on the quarterly basis. So that is also there. Now, can you give some light on uh, this, uh, like in your uh, pre presentation, you have shown your experienced leader leadership team and then well-qualified second generation of management. Is this because of this management uh, you are increasing, uh, uh, that's why the employee cost is increasing? No, even the second generation was there way back. Everybody in the second generation has joined in last 15 to eight years time over a different period cycle so it's not that because the second generation has joined the cost has gone up it is purely based on the numbers and uh, the, the rules regulation which we follow normally we used to do the managerial remuneration on the last quarter for the whole year but as per the advice of the board it has been decided that to divide it over a different quarter so there is no immediate effect on the on one quarter so we are doing it on quarter on quarter basis 
ओके 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 द सेकंड क्वेश्चन इज लाइक व्हेन यू आर इन गोइंग टू इंक्रीज योर शेयर होल्डिंग इन दिस मैगमनी फाइन कैम यू आर गोइंग टू रिसोर्ट सम काइंड ऑफ प्रिफेंशियल अलॉटमेंट टू प्रमोट अवेज इन दिस नो no this is uh, to the mol actually it is not to the promoter these are two type of uh, preference shares one is, is non convertible 8% 221 crore which oh. will be uh, redeemed immediately okay so the order and will be oh. paid along with 8% uh, dividend second is on 211 crore which will be uh, oc rps optional convertible uh, preference share and which will be redeemed over a period and till the time it will attract 8% dividend which will be paid to mol not to the promoters no no what i mean to say actually is uh, uh, promoter share holding in this megmani fund came is going to increase to the extent of 2023% so uh, because of this increase management is also uh, giving some money to megmani fund came isn't it No, no. I think uh, uh, from that perspective, let me a little bit explain on the scheme. Okay. Further of the two subsidiaries. Okay. And uh, um, make money agrochemicals, where uh, this uh, IFC stake has been taken over. Yeah. And by MOL to twenty one crore that we are talking about, and yeah. uh, money agrochemicals has issued NCRPS. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. 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 No problem. Once this is merged, so this. Yeah. N- NCRP will get cancelled and fresh NCRP will be issued by MFL, which will yeah. be redeemed in seven okay. to ten days time after NCLT order. And yes. when you merge two subsidiaries and there is a share holding in the MFL, overall equity will go down, which is okay. 75 crore to 41 crore. Okay. So when equity is reduced, there is no increase in the number of shares held by promoters. Yeah. The number remains same. But ah. because overall equity is going down, so that okay, why okay, okay, okay. is increasing. There is no increase in number of shares of the promoters. Okay, okay, okay. Because of the, the, the total the, the extinguishment of this uh, share holding by IFC, the promoter share holding is going to increase by that uh, extent, isn't it? You can say. Yes. Yeah, you can say that actually. Okay, okay. Second is, uh, uh, please, uh, if you can give some light, like uh, how this promoter family, like the related persons who are engaged in managerial uh, work of the company uh, in different levels, uh, what is the salary of uh, salary remuneration and commission of uh, this management team? So this is as per the company act actually under section one ninety eight. Okay, okay, okay. That is ceiling up to maximum ten percent you can provide for. So we can get this information from the annual report, isn't it? Yes, 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 very much there. Okay, okay. Thank you, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Parth Sardi from an individual investor. Please go ahead. Hello. Um, what is the current ECU and chlorine price? Current ECU is around forty-one thousand. What and what about chlorine? Chlorine pricing is approximately in the range of three to five rupees. Depends on the customer and the distance from our plant. Oh, okay. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you. The next question is from the line of Rohit Gupta, an individual investor. Please go ahead. Uh, sir, I'm still not clear about uh, this uh, shareholding structure in MFL. Uh, what I understand uh, from the recent uh, like answer that you gave to an earlier participant is that. Uh, the ifc shares are basically getting extinguished so uh, then the shareholding for even mol should increase na uh, in a proportionate manner just like the shareholding i understand that the number in terms of the number uh, overall the number of shareholding is going to decrease and the number of, of shares for both the promoters and mol should remain constant but in terms of the percentage shareholding then <coughs> the uh, shareholding percentage of mol increase is The IFC shares are being extinguished. No, as explained earlier, also because uh, when in 2008, when this uh, make money fine came was was established, at that time board has decided that their exposure in uh, MFL will be 57 percent. Okay, being a cyclical and commodity business, MOL and exposure. and MOL exposure will be remain 57 percent, and after stake of IFC. 25% balance was taken by promoters 
Okay, now that same stand is being maintained as of now and uh, when this uh, IFC exit has been given through only over subsidiary, 221 crore which you are saying he should increase so that money is coming back so that it is not going to increase from 57 to uh, 77 because this 20% uh, 25% stake which is purchased through wholly owned subsidiary is getting cancelled and this money 221 crore is paid that is immediately coming after NCLT order. Apart from that, apart from that this additional consideration which is coming uh, 211 crore. So which will attract the amount that Moel paid to IFC for uh, like extinguishing this uh, 20%, 25% stake of IFC, what was the consideration paid to IFC? 221 crore. Okay, and we, we are getting... 221 crore paid and this will coming immediately after NCLT order is coming back. So there is no money paid by MOL. Effectively, once this NCLT order is approved, money will come back. And over and above that, uh, there's, there, there will be another 220 crores of... Uh, whatever NCPR, if you were saying, uh, that is an uh, additional that consideration that we are getting? Uh, that is additional consideration will be paid by MFL to MOL to remain its stake at 57%. Okay. So that's 211 crore. Okay. And when will this uh, uh, 221 crore additional that you are mentioning, uh, when will it be redeemed uh, in terms of when, what is the maturity of this uh, preference share? This you are talking about over a period and as uh, the cash flow will permit in MFL, we are talking about around 4 to 5 years period, this will be paid. And till that time, 8% dividend, 16 crore will be paid by MFL to MOL as a dividend. Okay, okay. Get that. Thanks. That uh, clarifies. Okay, thanks. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Kishan Shah from Isha Securities. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, sir. Thank you for the uh, follow-up question. Uh, sir, uh, are um, volumes in FI18 in the pigment segment, uh, sales volume I'm talking about, that those, uh, they were 16,000 metric tons. Uh, and uh, in the nine-month period, we have done 11,120 approximately. So, uh, if we have to attain the same levels, we'll have to sell... 4,900 metric ton more in quarter four. So is it possible? I mean, what's the situation right now? Uh, will we be able to sell so much of uh, quantity? As per the current situation, uh, we will be uh, achieve the last year's numbers. Okay. Uh, so you mean to say we'll be able to sell around 4,900 metric ton in quarter four? Correct. Nearly. Nearly. Yeah. Nearly. So actually, the, it's the same situation for agro and uh, basic. Uh, we have to sell around 4,500 to 5,000 metric ton respectively to achieve the same, uh, I mean, FY18 levels. So is the situation same for all the uh, segments? See, in the case of agrochemical, as I explained earlier, the capacity utilization of the tonnage production and the sale is blend of technical and formulation both together. Here, what has happened in agrochemical, looking at the market condition, the technical sales is more compared to the formulation sales. So as a company, we have re realized better sales revenue as well as better profitability in technical rather than in formulation. So we may not be able to achieve the same kind of volume for the formulation, but for the technical, there will be a growth. So which is the main product, you know, where the tech efficiency of the plant is measured. So for the technical plant, we'll be able to sell more product compared to the formulation in the case of agrochemical. And in the case of basic chemical, if you see that, you know, there is slightly less uh, in nine months time, the volume is slightly less. So I think we will be able to recover in the fourth quarter. If last year and throughout the entire financial year, we did the sales of 600 crores approximately. Currently, nine months, we already done the sales of 527 crores. So, at this rate, uh, we'll able to cross it. And so, the even if you look at, volume is partially lower in throughout the year, year-on-year uh, -year basis. But if you look at this particular quarter, we have done far better than the previous, previous quarter also, as well as Q3 of uh, previous financial year also. So we don't see any problem in that direction. 
ओके ओके एंड सर जस्ट अ जनरल आउटलुक फॉर ईच सेगमेंट इन एफ आई ट्वेंटी लाइक वॉट काइंड ऑफ डिमांड आर यू एक्सपेक्टिंग और आर यू सींग ऑलरेडी एंड द ओवरऑल सिनेरियो ऑफ द मार्केट we hope that for fy20 the market condition will be good as well for all the three division and we'll be able to generate good amount of revenue with this with about 20% growth and uh, we'll be able to maintain the margin in similar range so even fy20 will be better but uh, budget numbers are under preparation so which we will be announcing what are the segment wise target for the next financial year in the next con call um, okay sir okay sir thank you very much thank you thank you the next question is from the line of jayant kumar sancheti an individual investor please go ahead yeah. uh, congratulations sir on having such a good results thank you and uh, just wanted to know sir that uh, the markets have been punishing us our stock after this complex merger was announced last quarter uh do, did you have any board of meeting board of, board of directors meeting uh to take back uh, this uh, merger or scheme of arrangement wherein uh, mfl uh, the share holding of uh, 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 make money organics in mfl will reduce from 77% to 50 uh, 57% See, uh, from the very beginning you know agro uh, basic chemical cycle is a very much cyclic business we have seen bad days also in the past so from the very beginning there was a mandate that you know we should not have a significant share in basic chemical division rather we should have a more share in our specialized business with this, which is pigment and agrochemical so uh, it was decided that we should not increase our share much in this segment second thing there is no there was no discussion in the board meeting regarding uh going back or so but as far as the share price has been hit we would be representing to in investors properly that what has happened what is the scheme and i think in very soon we will have a proper investors conference where we will be announcing the properly about the scheme our future plan and how do we want to take it further so that we can gain the confidence back from the investors and more uh, right, it was uh, very well discussed within the board and after taking approval of all board the members we have decided to go ahead so they were taken into full confidence mm-hmm. uh i understand sir but in this was decided in 2008 that uh, uh, the shareholding of uh, make money fine chem will uh, in the shareholding of make money organics in make money fine chem will not increase above 57% but after 10 years don't you think that the shareholders must be uh, Uh, asked uh, whether they would like to keep uh, their holding as 77% since uh, even in the current quarter our uh, profits would have decreased by around 12 to 13 crores if uh, the scheme of arrangement would have been uh, uh, would have been applicable today <laughs> uh, we have not had in that line of discussion but uh, for the betterment of the investors as i discussed earlier also once the project once the capex will be stabilized then uh, we are discussing with various uh, we are getting various suggestion from different individuals and uh, financial advisors so we will have a proper uh, plan what to do next so that even the investors get benefit of it and so one last question how much is the capex expected in big uh, money fine chem how much uh, in the in the next two quarters in the next two years so currently we already announced uh, two years back that we are going for a capacity of 40 crores and that is uh, will be fully completed in next uh, two quarters subsequently uh, once that is streamlined and everything then we may announce for the capex okay thank you sir thank you thank you The next question is from the line of Praveen Sharma, an individual investor. Please go ahead. Yeah, uh, thank you for taking my question. Uh, sir, as far as this pigment uh, uh, segment is concerned, you <coughs> the sluggishness is more due to the seasonal nature or uh, its structural nature? Because when you say it's due to printing, uh, which constitutes around 40 to 50 percent of the pigment uh, utilization or consumption. 
then don't you you know how do you think that uh, this will come back to original level within a quarter means don't you think this is a structural in nature means i am not able to gauge it can you elaborate more on that the printing is a part of one segment in the ink industry the printing media is on decline mode but on the other side you can see that the packaging industry is on the increasing mode packaging is so so uh, we find that the uh, Printing is on decline, but the same consumption pattern will be increased in the packaging side. Okay, okay. So overall, on a blended average basis, you know, you feel you you assume that uh, whatever the capacity expansion which we are planning, uh, uh, you know, it is going to yield us a, a good amount of asset to turnover ratio. Means, uh, you know, it should not happen that we invest and uh, you know subsequently we realize that. Uh, the the kind of returns we were expecting from this segment and our investment has the return on capital employed is uh, you know up to the expectations uh, uh, that level of uh, yeah can you throw some light on that so pravin sharma the thing is uh, first of all we are not planning any capex for the same range of product what we are okay. making right now in the pigment division mm. that is mm. very clear whatever capacity we have we feel that you know there it doesn't make any sense to expand in the same kind of product range Mm-hmm. and the uh, second thing is it is growing at a uh, low level at about 2% 2.5% so yes uh, there is not significant growth coming in this segment so there is a challenge so we are working on some new pigments and uh, for that uh, in the past as we have dis- uh, already discussed that we are waiting for the environment clearance once we'll have environment clearance we'll be announcing the projects okay okay thank you thank you Thank you. The next question is from the line of Suresh Agarwal, an individual investor. Please go ahead. Sir, I please uh, tell me what was the uh, uh, this uh, promoter is taking MGL before this IFC exit? Can you repeat, can you repeat your question? Sir, your voice before, is not clear. Before we have given IFC an exit, what was the promoter shareholding in this uh, MGL? Magmani Fine Camp. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was twenty three percent. It was twenty three percent, and after this uh, IFC exit, how much? Uh, as, as, as we mentioned, that the number of shares remains same of yeah. the promoters. There is a cross holding in the uh, subsidiary. The stake yeah. has been purchased by Make Money Agrochemical Private Limited, yeah. and those shares will get cancelled, and overall equity will come down from seventy yeah. five to forty one crore. Yeah. So the shareholding pattern will change. MOL will remain at 57 percent. And uh, 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 the, the promoter holding? Uh, 43 percent. Promoter holding 43 percent. So how much promoter is contributing for this additional 20 percent share increase in shareholding? If they are if, if they are contributing anything, or just Meg Money Fine Chem is uh, paying uh, 221 crore plus 211 crore. And the promoter, without contribution of anything, they are uh, getting their selling increased by 20 percent. No, it is not a question of contribution. Now, if you have understood the scheme, so MOL has funded Make Money Agrochemicals Private Limited by 221 crore. Okay. Purchase the IFC stake. Yeah. Once that stake has been purchased, uh. and now after the NCLT order, this 221 crore is coming back to MOL. Okay. Eight percent dividend. Yeah. Amal has not paid anything for that. This money will come back with eight percent dividend. Okay. okay. And rationale for the scheme was to create the liquidity in Amal. If you see the balance sheet of March 18. Yeah. And debt position was 312 crore. And again we paid this 221 crore. And additional capex plan is around 350 to 400 crore. Okay. On the standalone balance sheet, it becomes around 900 crore. Okay. Get liquidity and fund the expansion in MOL. This was the scheme. That this money should come back to MOL. Okay. That's why these uh, two subsidiaries are being merged. Okay. When you merge two subsidiaries, the stake which is there in M- uh, Make Money Agrochemicals of MFL, this uh-huh. will get cancelled. Okay. And this fresh jo hai, NCRPS will get issued, which uh-huh. immediately after NCLT order within 7 to 10 days will get redeemed. Okay. So money will flow back to MOL. So effectively, this money paid for IFC exit will come back. Apart, actually, uh, okay, okay, okay. 
अबार्ट फ्रॉम दैट टू आंसर द सेकेंड की टू रिटेन दैट फिफ्टी सेवन परसेंट याट इज नॉट इंक्रीजिंग दैट इज एडिशनल ओ सी आर पी एस ऑफ टू हंड्रेड इलेवन करोड़ इज बींग पेड बाई एम एफ विच विल बी ओपर इंड ओके 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 नो वॉट इज द रीजन बिहाइंड द बीटिंग ऑफ दिस मान मेघमानी ऑर्गेनिक स्टॉक प्राइस इज इज दैट इन द टोटल इन्वेस्टर मान फोराम इज दैट दैट प्रमोटर्स आर गेटिंग अंडी एडवांटेज एंड दे आर इंक्रीजिंग देयर शेयर होल्डिंग इन मेघमानी फाइन केम विदाउट कंट्रीब्यूटिंग एनीथिंग ओके सो प्लीज आई विल रिक्वेस्ट यू फ्रॉम ऑल द इन्वेस्टर साइड यू प्लीज गिव ए डिटेल डिटेल क्लेरिफिकेशन ओके जस्ट इन राइटिंग यू गिव ए डिटेल क्लेरिफिकेशन सो दैट एवरीबडी कुड अंडरस्टैंड ऑल दिस थिंग्स एंड यूर अगेन लुक वी आर सफर आई एम इन्वेस्टिंग इन योर कंपनी फ्रॉम लास्ट फाइव इयर्स ओके आई गोट थाउजेंड्स ऑफ शेयर लाइक अराउंड फिफ्टीन ट्वेंटी थाउजेंड शेयर बट आई परचेज ऑल दो शेयर एट द रेट ऑफ नाइन्टी हंड्रेड रुपीज एंड नाउ शेयर प्राइज डूरिंग अराउंड फिफ्टी टू फिफ्टी थ्री एंड ऑल द इन्वेस्टर्स आर एक्चुअली एलेजिंग दैट प्रोमोटर्स हैव मैंने गेन फ्रॉम दिस ट्रांजेक्शन एंड दिस मार्जिनल दिस स्मॉल इन्वेस्टर्स दे आर मैंने सफरिंग फॉर फॉर दिस सो आई विल रिक्वेस्ट फ्रॉम माई साइड प्लीज गिव ए डिटेल क्लेरिफिकेशन राइटिंग ऑन द बी एस सी एन ईसी साइड सो दैट वी कैन वी कैन गो थ्रू दिस वी कैन डिस्कस दिस एंड इन्वेस्टर कॉन्फिडेंस विच यू आर टॉकिंग अबाउट दैट यू विल ट्राई टू गेट द इन्वेस्टर कॉन्फिडेंस दैट विल कम बैक श्योरली वी आर अवेटिंग द फाइनल ऑर्डर फ्रॉम एनसीएलटी वन दैट इज देयर बिफोर फाइनल ऑर्डर बिफोर फाइनल ऑर्डर ऑल्सो वट इज इन योर माइंड वट यू आर गोइंग टू डू हाउ यू आर नॉट गेटिंग बेनिफिटेड हाउ यू आर नॉट टेकिंग द एडवांटेज ऑफ स्मॉल इन्वेस्टर यू जस्ट क्लियरिफाई दैट इन दिन बी एस सी एंड एन एन एस सी सो दैट वी ऑल कैन गो थ्रू दिस एंड वी कैन डिसाइड यस इन द प्रोमोटर्स आर वेरी जेन्युन लाइक टू क्वेश्चन आर टू लुक लुक सर टू क्वेश्चन आर गोइंग ऑन ऑन द इन्वेस्टर्स माइंड फर्स्ट इज You are getting unduly. You are the uh, advantage of this uh, IFC exit. Okay, so you are getting the this uh, share holding increase by twenty percent without contributing anything. That is this. Second is this. All your family members are coming on the board and they are getting high remunerative, high high remuneration, and that's why ये बने quarter on quarter this uh, employee cost is increasing. So please, I will request you from my side as a small shareholder of your company. You are big people, but you are small investor. Please, for the sake of hours and for the sake of the company reputation, please give a clarification, detailed clarification, so that we can all go through this. We can discuss this, and again, confidence of uh, small investor in your company remains continued because I know this is a very good company, a very good company. And all your actually particles are doing very nice, but all questions are on the on the on the on the on the on the promoters. Please, please do this, sir. That's thank you, thank, thank you, Mr. Agarwal. We'll do it. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Ravindra Kumar, an individual investor. Please go ahead. Hello. Yes. हाँ सर देखो यहाँ पे ना सब ने ना एक ही क्वेश्चन पूछा है मैं एक्चुअली क्या सभी इन्वेस्टर्स को भी ये समझाना चाह रहा हूँ और आप भी इस पे अपनी बायर बात बताइएगा देखिएगा सर मुझे जो एक्चुअली क्या जो इन्वेस्टर्स है ना इनको समझने में ना थोड़ी प्रॉब्लम हो रही है क्योंकि देखिएगा ये ना अकाउंटिंग का मैटर है और मैं आपको बताऊं प्रोफेशनली मैं चार्टेड अकाउंटेंट हूं तो मैं सभी इन्वेस्टर्स को भी जो कॉन्फ्रेंस कॉल में पार्टिसिपेट कर रहे हैं उनको थोड़ी क्लैरिटी देना चाहता हूं आसान शब्दों में देखा ऐसा है ये जो 25 परसेंट जो होल्डिंग है ये जो कम हो रही है इसका जो पीछे रीजन है मैं सभी इन्वेस्टर्स को भी बोल रहा हूँ और प्लीज मैनेजमेंट मैं भी आपको बोलूंगा कि अगर आप इसमें कुछ डाउट हो तो आप मुझे प्लीज क्लियर करिएगा ये जो ट्वेंटी होल्डिंग कम हो रही है ये फाइन कैम अगर एक्जेक्टली इसको नटशेल देखें इसको लेमेन भाषा में समझें तो जो 25 परसेंट होल्डिंग है मेघ मनी फाइन कैम इसका बाय बैक कर रही है क्योंकि जो नंबर ऑफ शेयर्स है वो कम हो रहे हैं तो जो 25 परसेंट जो शेयर्स बाय बैक हो रहे हैं उसकी जो 220 करोड़ के आसपास जो वैल्यू बनती है वो मेघ मनी ऑर्गेनिक्स को कैश में दी जा रही है यानी कि जो एक का मेघ मनी ऑर्गेनिक मेघ मनी फाइन कैम का जो शेयर था उसकी बाय बैक की है और ये जो बाय बैक है वो एक के हिसाब से जो भी आई को जो एग्जिट दिया था उस प्राइस पर हो रही है तो इसका मतलब ये है कि जो 25 फाइव परसेंट शेयर मेघमनी ऑर्गेनिक्स ने सेल किए उसके पैसे उसको मिल गए हैं मेघमनी ऑर्गेनिक्स को और इसके अलावा एक और बात मैं आपको बताऊंगा कि ये मेघमनी ऑर्गेनिक्स के लिए फेवरेबल है एडवर्स नहीं है अब वो नंबर ऑफ शेयर कम होने की वजह से प्रमोटर्स की होल्डिंग इंक्रीज कर रही है क्योंकि तो पच्चीस शेयर जो है वो कैंसिल हो गए हैं उसकी वजह से और दूसरी बात यह है कि जब मेघमनी फाइन कैम्प का जो एग्जिट हुआ था आईएफसी को जब दो करोड़ रूपये के हिसाब से बायबैक हुई तो मेघमनी फाइन कैम ने दो करोड़ रुपए वास्तव में मेघमनी ऑर्गेनिक्स को दिए जबकि आज जो कास्टिक सोडा है या जो क्लोरीन है या जो फाइन केमिकल्स हैं, उस कंपनी की अगर आप वैल्यू निकालोगे तो वो उस वैल्यू से कम होगी 
तो अल्टीमेटली मेक मनी ऑर्गेनिक्स को तो बेनिफिट हुआ है कि हायर प्राइस के ऊपर उसका बाय हुआ है और जितना उसकी पेमेंट में डिले हो रहा है उसको उसका डिविडेंड मिल रहा है तो मुझे ऐसा नहीं लगता कहीं पर भी कि इसमें थोड़ा झोल है हालांकि इसमें ये हो सकता था कि और बेटर ऑप्शन हो सकते थे और भी लेकिन मुझे ऐसा लगता है कि इसमें इन्वेस्टर्स को वरी करने की जरूरत नहीं है एक सिंपल 25 परसेंट का बाय बैक मेग मनी फाइन कैम ने किया है मेग मनी ऑर्गेनिक्स क्योंकि उसकी शेयर होल्डर थी और उसने अपने शेयर टेंडर कर दिए उसको तो ये इसका नटशल रिजल्ट निकलता है जो मुझे लगता है और मेग मनी ऑर्गेनिक्स को फायदा हुआ इसमें कि उसका जो शेयर है उसको एक सौ मिले उस शेयर की अगर आप उसकी फाइन कैम की आज वैल्यू निकालोगे तो वैल्यू थोड़ी बहुत कम ही होगी हालांकि मेग मनी फाइन कैम से प्रॉफिट ज्यादा है लेकिन वो साइकिल के बिजनेस है हम समझते हैं मैनेजमेंट की कमिटमेंट को तो ये अभी थोड़ा सा हम शेयर होल्डर्स को शोट में लग रहा है कि यार वो सारा फाइन कैम से प्रॉफिट आ रहा है तो हमारा नुकसान हो गया बट मुझे नहीं लगता ऐसा कि ऐसा समझना चाहिए क्योंकि साइकिल बिजनेस से प्रॉफिट्स अप्स एंड डाउन होते हैं और आप इसके बारे में थोड़ा और बताइएगा मुझे आई थिंक मिस्टर रविंद्र थैंक यू फॉर योर क्लैरिफिकेशन एंड आई थिंक फॉर द बेटरमेंट ऑफ द इन्वेस्टर्स विल एड्रेस द कंसर्न टू एवरीबडी in fact we are planning to have a proper investors conference where we can explain to everybody in a long term view so that people can understand properly so we we'll do it in the near future aur sir main ek sawal aur tha mera ye hello yes aap sunte hain mere ko hello sun rahe hain yes yes we can hear you yes jo investors hain dekho sir main aapko batau maine iske upar teen video youtube pe dal rakhe hain jis bhi investor ko koi doubt ho na ये सारी की सारी जो स्कीम है अरेंजमेंट की मैंने तीन वीडियोस में समझाई हुई है इसके सारे के सारे बेनिफिट्स और जो भी हैं तो मैं इन्वेस्टर को कहूंगा आप गो थ्रू हुई है वहां पर थोड़ा समझिएगा क्योंकि तो चीजें थोड़ी कॉम्प्लिकेशन होती हैं तो इनको समझना पड़ता है थैंक यू थैंक यू वेरी मच मिस्टर रविंदर थैंक यू ओके नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन इज फ्रॉम द लाइन ऑफ रोहित गुप्ता एन इंडिविजुअल इन्वेस्टर प्लीज गो है The next question is from the line of Suresh Agarwal, an individual investor. Please go ahead. Sorry, Ravinder ji, जो अभी बोल रहे थे चार्टर डेकांटेंट, इन्होंने बहुत सारे वीडियो डाल रखे हैं YouTube में. लेकिन इन्होंने अभी जो बोला 25 percent buyback कर लिया. अगर 25 percent buyback कर लिया तो promoter share holding तो पहले पहले 30 percent थी और इनकी मेगमनी ऑर्गेनिस की 57 percent थी. तो उनका कैसे ये increase हो गया? उनका total 20 percent कैसे increase हो गया? ये एक्चुअली वीडियो बनाते हैं डालते हैं इनका क्या उद्देश्य मुझे मालूम नहीं लेकिन इनका वीडियो कोई क्लियर वीडियो नहीं है इन्होंने अपने वीडियो में समझाया है कि प्रमोटर ने प्रिफेंशियल शेयर के हिसाब से तीस रुपया ना कुछ के हिसाब से इन्होंने ई किया है बहुत पहले उन्होंने सब्सक्राइब किया है मिस्टर सुरेश फॉर योर बेटर अंडरस्टैंडिंग आई थिंक व्हाट वी रिक्वेस्ट वी कैन हैव अ सेपरेट कॉन्फ्रेंस कॉल यस एग्जैक्टली एग्जैक्टली सर मैं यही चाहता हूं कि आप 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 सेपरेटली आइए दीजिए रविंदर जी का बात करके रविंदर जी इज ऑल्सो इन्वेस्टर वी आर ऑल्सो इन्वेस्टर रविंदर जी जो समझा रहे हैं दट इज नॉट क्लियर रविंदर जी ने जो मैंने देखा यूट्यूब में उनका दस तो वीडियो दिया है उन्होंने मेघमनी ऑर्गेनिक्स को लेकर हर बार उन्होंने अलग अलग बात बातचा दी है लेकिन उससे कुछ क्लियर नहीं हो रहा था we respect your view as well as mr ravinder's view but for your better understanding let us have a separate con call for your better understanding point of view sir kon kon ke pehle sir aap ek to ye bana kar ke de dijiye sir ek to please dijiye sir ek to okay okay thank you thank you sir thank you ladies and gentlemen as there are no further questions from the participants i would now like to hand the conference over to mr ankit patel for closing comments uh thank you very much all the investors for participating in con call uh, of q3 fy19 uh, we look forward to your support thank you very much